Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we are going to go over the installation of our newest trigger. Uh, this one is for the MMP380 Shield EZ, and it is the SCOTUM. Uh, SCOTUM is Latin for shield, uh, hence the name. Uh, it is a flat face trigger with a, the post travel built in at the same place, but a pre travel adjustable stop uh, in as well. All right, so let's go over tools you're gonna need. You need your bench block, you need a small flathead screwdriver, you need your brass, pun uh, brass punch, brass hammer and polymer hammer. You'll need your 3 32nd uh, punch and a two millimeter or 1 16th punch. All right, so let's go ahead and lock and clear. We are visually and physically empty. So let's go ahead and strip the slide, set it off to the side. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the takedown. Now you're going to go to about a 45 degree angle and you work it back and forth at the same time. It's in there pretty good and you'll pop it with your flathead just like that. Set that off to the side. Now your locking block pin on the front goes from right to left. Okay, it should just push on out with a good amount of force if it doesn't just give it a tap and the rear doesn't matter which direction you drive it from uh, so it's easier without the mag release in the way to do it from left to right if you've got your setup for left-handed shooting just reverse it from that just whichever way you don't have your mag catch so it's not popping it up out of the way all right so now we are ready to take the locking block and the fire control unit and all that stuff out. So first we'll pull up on the locking block. And the reason we have to pull all of this out together, we'll get to once we get it all out. Take your flathead, just pop it up a little bit. Go ahead and pull it all out. It comes out as one piece. Now, it is separate. comes right apart easily. But that is why the way the trigger bar is set up, that's why you have to pull everything out together because otherwise you can't get the trigger bar out to get to the trigger in the locking block. We're not going to be pulling anything apart in the fire control unit. However, the lifter and the, the what is basically the sear piece, part of the sear, do come off. Okay, So this is where the trigger bar interacts and grabs a hold of things here, pulls it forward, hits the sear, makes the hammer go. So take them off for right now and just set them off to the side with the fire control unit. All right, we're gonna move our, oh, and then I did that without going over this. All right, so this little guy right here helps with the trigger bar and is in the frame, okay? So don't go throwing your frame like I did. It sits right there, okay? And it needs to stay there and it sits just like that with the ledge going into the pistol. Uh, the spring for your slide lock uh, thing just disappeared on me. Oh, now I threw it with it. There we go. I'm going to magnet off camera. You can't see the magnetic bolt holds everything. Um, this is your slide lock lever spring, right? And it'll, when we put everything back together, this will make more sense. So be cognizant of those two pieces because when you take the locking block out, this tends to like to come apart and fall down in the frame. So we're going to set the frame off to the side, our slide lock, slide lock spring. Now we're down to our trigger and locking block. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two millimeter and one sixteenth and we're going to push the uh, trigger bar pin out. That holds the trigger bar to the trigger. And the next thing we're going to do is set it on that side. And it doesn't matter which direction you push it from. I just prefer going left to right for the trigger pivot. Now it is under spring tension. Not a lot, but enough to where it'll pop that out. So don't just go yanking it out because your trigger return spring will take off like a bullet. All right. So there's our stock trigger. We're going to set it off to the side. We're going to put it in our bag. Keep it. Why do we keep our stock parts? in case you have to send your gun in for warranty work. Uh, I left off, you also need an 050 Allen wrench to make the adjustment to the pre-travel screw. 
Uh, I start off about two, three threads out. And that's usually, for most of you, what it'll actually be. But you need to be able to actually adjust that. So you will also need your 050 Allen wrench. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the trigger bar in. seat yep see you gotta watch what you're doing too because it's easy to miss the pin the pin to miss the hole so line it up and I like to use the block so that once I have it all lined up I can just push that through seat it nicely with the punch everything's intact trigger bars moving all right so we're ready to put it back in the locking block so the way the trigger return spring works on this gun is you notice this channel here, just like in the stock, all right? And we're going to set it just like so, okay? So when we go to put this in, all right, part of this, sorry about that, I had a call I had to take. So when we go to put this all back in, you'll notice inside your frame you have this built up part with the slot in the middle that's where the front of the trigger return spring is going to go into all right so when we get to that point we'll go over that but first let's get her back together so you can put your spring on like so go ahead and get it up in there and as you're pushing where the pivot's going to go go ahead and take your pivot get it started take your two millimeter or one sixteenth and use it from the opposite side to push down on the spring like so so that you can get the uh, pivot through all right and you'll probably have to do some finagling just because the spring pressure wants to move the pin but once you get it in it's going to look just like that okay and when we go to install it what we'll do is uh go ahead and move this pre-travel in so we've got just enough room for it to catch on the frame. Now comes the trickiest part of the whole thing, putting it back together. All right, so we're gonna start with our slide lock spring and slide lock. You're gonna hook, first put it on there, have the flap to the rear, hook to the front. And once you hook it in, you notice it'll pretty much seat itself. Go ahead and take your flat head, finish seating the flat spring all the way over, all right? Now, we're gonna take and make sure that your lifter is on the second hole, not the first one, because if it's on the first one, it's not gonna reach up and hit the blocker. So second hole, and you see how this piece is, with our cutout, cutout's gonna go to the rear. All right, just like that. So when you swing it around, when you're moving it, it should stop itself right here at the back of the fire control unit. And that's that arm that's hitting there. All right, so then we're gonna hold everything again, making sure that this piece is in the frame, spring down, cut out going to the inside of the gun. I'm gonna pick up our locking block and we're just gonna kinda make it all meet inside. Now, trickiest part of all of this is getting everything to cooperate because there's a lot of moving stuff all right and the reason being we need it to all cooperate is because as you're seating the fire control unit in which you can go ahead and push in a little more ahead of time you need to go ahead and press your grip safety in somewhat reason being as you're seating this the uh, lifter goes into part of the grip safety. And if you don't do that first, you grip safety and squeeze it all day, nothing's gonna happen, okay? So when you go to seat it, just sit there and play with it a little bit. That's literally about all you can do. Make sure you get it right. Now, when you have your fire control unit seated, push on your lifter, or correction, your grip safety, and the lifter and uh, 
this part of the sear and everything, all of it should move, all right? Everything should move. Now, the super tricky part. You will take your small flathead, come in from the bottom and just help it. All right, just like that. Now, if you have your small flathead with the cut in it, I haven't cut the new one yet, that'll be easier to do. Well, let's see if we can do that again, get a better angle here. All right, so you see the spring right there. You'll lift up, you'll see right there, you can see the screwdriver kind of in there. Just lift and start pushing down. Now, it may take a couple times, but once you get it seated, you'll know because it's gonna push up on the locking block. So you wanna hold that in place and go ahead and put in your locking block pin so that it holds that down. We're gonna double check one last time our grip safety. So while everything was moving around, that moved on us. So there we go, okay? Make sure again, trigger bar, everything's moving in tandem. Then go ahead and put in the fire control unit pin. It's gonna hold everything together. Now we can do a little, we'll go ahead and put our tape down into, we don't have to, but we'll do a small function test right now. And all we're doing is making sure that the hammer can fall. If the hammer falls and cocks, then we're ready to go ahead and put the slide on, adjust our pre-travel and do a function check. So let's go ahead. Now remember, those of you that own this already know that you cannot, unlike an XD, I think a lot of people who have owned an XD <coughs> have tried doing this. Do not push in the grip safety when you're trying to put your slide on because what happens is the lifter lifts and it gets in the way of uh, where the, I want to call it a bolt, that's ba the firing pin housing because there's your blocker. All right, there's the housing for the firing pin, which if you drive that out, that whole piece comes out. But what'll happen is it sits just high enough that it'll catch on this part of the firing pin housing. All right, we don't want that because you can easily, as thin as that is, if you try and force it, you're gonna break something. So make sure you're just holding it from the sides. Get it back to your slide lock, take down. All right, now, we are ready for our first function test before we adjust anything. I'm pulling the trigger without pushing in on the housing. Nothing should happen. As soon as you push in on housing, grip safety, pushing on the grip safety, without pushing the grip safety, nothing should happen. As soon as you grab that grip safety, the hammer should fall. Now we're ready to start adjusting, all right? So you'll get your reset and we got fall, okay? So let's go ahead and rack it while holding the trigger to the rear. You're gonna take your 050, and what you wanna do is turn your pre-travel screw counterclockwise until you no longer get reset. Now, I would start out with probably four or five threads showing just to be on the safe side. We got about four threads showing. So we need to go a little more until we no longer get reset. All right, so right there, we have no reset. That's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna start a quarter turn clockwise at a time until we get reset. All right, so right there's our stop. Give it one more quarter turn because you know during firing it may change heat transfer might expand whatever always give it that one more quarter turn just to give it a little bit more room to maneuver and you're done guys and that's it and the scotum is now installed grip safety you gotta push it in and you'll know, because if you don't hold the grip safety, ain't nothing gonna happen. <clears throat> and so there you go, a good 20 to 25% reduction, depending on the tolerances of your particular pistol. You get the flat face trigger 
Uh, once it's dialed in for pre-travel, that sits perfectly straight up and down for the most part. And you didn't have to go out and sell your first Shield EZ to buy the new Performance Center one that's also, you know, a good $200 more than this is. Um, these are on the website shipping now. Um, they'll run about the same price as the rest of our 3D printed triggers, so around $22, $22. $3. I'm not sure what it's up there for right now. Um, but that'll end up being the price around 20, you'll know, spend around 20 to 25 bucks. Uh, and you can't go wrong, man. It makes a huge difference on, and make sure you get your dumb finger out of the way. <coughs> Gives you just a nice, nice trigger on what is already a nice, nice carry pistol. Um, so that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at tech. That's Tango Echo Charlie Hotel at GallowayPrecision.com. Uh, be sure to follow us here on social media on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe below. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, GunStreamer, and Vimeo. And as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless you.